Hi everyone, my name's Emily Stroud and I work for the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust. We're a leading uh, wildlife and conservation charity within the two counties of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight and we encourage protection for wildlife and interactions with wildlife on our reserves and through our different programs and events that we also offer. My role within the Trust is as a community engagement officer for a heritage lottery funded project called Secrets of the Solent. Secrets of the Solent is a national lottery heritage funded project. We are going to be running the project for in total four years, but we've already been running for two years, so we're halfway there. The point of this project is to raise the understanding, appreciation of the Solent's marine life with people like yourself. Anyone who interacts with the Solent is the kind of people that we would like to communicate with and engage with. Because when you fall in love with something, when you understand something and you fall in love with something, you're more likely to protect it. And that's what we do through this project is about education and then protection and behavioral change. My role within the project is managing all the volunteers. So I've got, I've got about almost 150 volunteers that I manage, but I also work on other areas in the project. So I work on a part of the project called Citizen Science. And this is where we conduct scientific experiments. So um, the one that we do is the intertidal surveying. So we go down into the intertidal shore, which is the area of shore that the tide moves in and out of, and we on a very low tide, we go to the beach and we do a walkover survey um, and we have volunteers uh, from the public who come and help us and they write down the species we're finding. So they're engaging, they're learning about the species we're finding, they're helping scientifically because that data is super important. Um, that data is important because um, you, we need to know what's happening on our shores, especially with the changing factors, climate change and things like that. We need to be monitoring our shores and ensuring that they are in a, in a, in a good state. Um, for example, last year we found the Asian date mussel, which is an invasive marine species. Now, it was one of the first recorded uh, on, on uh, in and around this area, so it was a big deal. We actually let Natural England know that we'd actually found this particular species. So our data is very important, so I work on that. I work on a few textile art projects. It's another way to engage people, to get people involved, to bring a community together. Um, and I, I do a number of other uh, things as well. So you're probably wondering um, where I work. And currently, uh, in this current COVID situation, this is my home. My very uh, messy kitchen for you guys is where I'm currently working. But there are a few other places uh, that I work. On a standard year where we don't have a current pandemic going on, I'm pretty much all over the place. I just want to take you uh, down the shore to show you a little bit more of my office and explain a little bit more what I do. that I've just come across that you may have seen before or may not have seen before. Come check this out. So what we have here in my hands is two Pacific oysters. Well, you can see are joined together there. They're actually a non-native species and when I say non-native it means that they're actually not indigenous to this particular area or actually country. They were brought over um, and have done very well sadly and when a non-native or an invasive species comes over it takes up other space it can take food resources it might not have a natural predator it can really affect the natural eco ecosystems now interestingly uh, the best way to identify this particular species is this teardrop shape and this lovely wave here so if you think about the pacific ocean the motion of the ocean and you think about these intricate circular uh, curves and waves along the edges here then you've probably got a Pacific oyster on your hands and we also have barnacles growing all along the top here. I'm 
actually really excited. We've just found a native oyster. So, you know, I've just explained about the Pacific oysters being non-native. Well, actually, we do have a native species, but they're incredibly rare. And this is the joy of working outdoors, the joy of my office, so to speak. I get to find these amazing animals and educate people about them. I also get to record the data and I've actually taken a photo of this particular one I'm going to show you in a bit and I've located the GPS and I will be sub submitting that data. But enough of that, let's have a look at what we've got here. So this is our native oyster and sadly 85% of all coral reefs and oyster beds around the world have completely gone so this is fantastic to see that we actually have a native oyster here it is alive I did check but it's also had this particular hole here if you guys can see that that's actually most likely from uh, a tingle which is a type of uh, carnivorous sea snail it's also known as an oyster drill and you can see the reason um, is because it likes to prey on oysters and what it does is it's got a specialized tooth that's like a drill and acid for saliva and basically softens the shell and then drills its way in I wonder if you can, if I can get a bit closer to that for you so that hole and then they would throw up digestive juices and try and digest this lovely meal now um, Back in the 1970s, we had the largest native oyster fishery in the whole of Europe. I mean, the whole Solent was chock full of this absolutely stunning species. So I just wanted to show you the difference in the shape of these two particular species. So in my here we have the Pacific oyster. And you can see those frilly edges, that teardrop shape. And over here we have the native oyster, which is those circular concentric rings, almost looks like a horse's hoof. So flat on top and kind of rounded there. Mm -hmm. So over in the feed feeding over in the water are Brent geese. Now sadly I can't get a much closer shot because they are feeding and I don't wish to disturb them. So you might be wondering, how did I get into this role in, and what inspired me to take this particular position on? Well, I absolutely love marine wildlife. Uh, it's my passion ever since I was a young person. Um, I'm obsessed with water sports and being by the sea. And my favorite thing to do on holiday was rock pulling. And that just really inspired me when the first Blue Planet came out. I think I was probably 16 when that happened. And it, it just really inspired me to learn more about it. So I did a degree in marine biology. And then I realized the thing that I loved the, the most about that particular thing was telling other people about all the amazing uh, marine life and 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 this kind of the state that our seas are in and wanting to do something about that so I decided uh, to go uh, follow my passions which is people wildlife communicating and I luckily came across a role here at the trust that enables me to pursue all my passions and and make a difference I'm really looking forward 